Okay, it's time for part two of my acceleration enrichment. What I'm gonna do is open up my log. So I've got one here and then also one right here. So these are kind of the two days that I drove to work. There's a couple of things I wanna call out and show here. Uh, up first, when I last left off, there was the setting. So the map-based acceleration enrichment, I had it set to start a little bit higher, about 3,000 RPM to, I think it was 5,500, maybe six grand. The problem was, is it was too much at those ranges. So you can see here as it would kick on, you see my RPM kind of flutter a little bit as it was hitting that boost spot because, well, that's exactly what it did. I mean, uh, it was just flooding it out a little too much in that area. So once I pulled over and I changed the settings, it started to take a little bit of a better shape and things started to smooth out and look a lot better. I still had some goofiness. So overall, just some things that were a little bit strange. Um, <clears throat> I've gone back and even adjusted them more so now. But you can see right here, as I'm coming off the throttle, I'm getting back onto it. It's behaving how it really likes to behave. My uh, air fuel ratios are really happy. Um, they're actually enjoying it a little bit. I could lean them out maybe a hair, so I might still go back in there and fine tune it. But you can see as I'm moving the throttle, the acceleration enrichment kicks on and takes care of it. There was some goofiness as I rode through it, so there's a couple of things I want to call out. This will probably drive some people insane as they're going through and they're tuning their car if they're not aware of what's going on. Now, uh, let me call out, I'm gonna take a look. So as I'm getting on the data log, you'll notice acceleration enrichment triggers right there. So the white line on the bottom graph is being triggered as it's coming in. Now this was the first round where it's just stupid. Um, it was way too much. You can kind of see how the drivability of the map behaved here to the left side as you watch the map values uh, with everything in there. One of the things is notice right here. I mean, if you look at my map at the top, you'll see that it looks like it's descending down. So I hit my kind of boost level there and it starts to drop off and maintain it. And then all of a sudden it hits acceleration enrichment. Well, why in the earth would it hit the acceleration enrichment at that value? And that's kind of strange. Well, the reason why is because data logs are just snapshots. So think about it in this way. I'm going from, you know, 318.918 seconds to uh, 319.002 seconds. So there's a lot of revolutions that are happening in that short window of time. So if I have something going on at the map sensor, because these are more of an average value that it's showing on the data log. So my data log is only showing part of it. It's not telling the full story because it's just really not able to. I mean, you'd have to get down to just a minute detail that it's not really gonna log at. So in this case, What's not being shown is there is something that's triggering it between these two instances to say, hey, you are now getting uh, you know, acceleration enrichment based off of that map value. Something happened to bump it just a hair where it went down and then came back up, um, probably having to do with the wastegate, hits the acceleration enrichment and just floods out the engine with just a ton of fuel. And it, it was violent too. So. I knew that was coming in. I had to have acceleration enrichment off by that point in time. Um, but yeah, just keep that in mind as you're reading through these data logs that things like that are gonna pop up. Just because you don't see it in the data log doesn't mean it doesn't exist. It, data log is still averaged. And so in my case, I might go into the tune and I might change the, uh, the map field a little bit to average a little bit better to take care of that. And, uh, and see if that takes a better job there. Um, with Speedwino, even with Megasquirt, you have the option to go in there and say, here's a lag factor or some type of smoothing factor for your coolant temperature, your uh, map values, because these map sensors are amazingly precise to the point where there are people that run their map sensor line on one of the cylinders and can actually calculate where top dead center is based on the map vacuum value. That's awesome, that's amazing, that's crazy to think about, but it does do that, so really cool there. Let's go ahead and I'll switch back to my good data log. So uh, here we go. Nope, that was a bad one, sorry, switched to the wrong one. So here's my good data log, 
and you can kind of see how it's behaving. This is a really good area. As I come on to boost, it's hitting that acceleration enrichment. It uh, is kind of keeping my air fuel ratio right about where I want it. It's a little bit lean in this section by comparison, but uh, as it really starts to hit into boost, it richens up. So it's absolutely fine considering the boost level and the RPM range. So I'm quite happy with how that turned out. Overall, it's driving really well. As I start tucking into it, it seems like it triggers every now and then a little bit quickly off of very small things. So I might want to go ahead and, like I said just a moment ago, play around with the map averaging factor to try and make it average out those map events a little bit more so that I don't get false triggers and, uh, and don't cause any issues there. Overall, the engine's happy with this. It, uh, it thinks it's really well. That was just between a soft shift hit perfectly, was smooth as could be. Overall, I'm not getting really any false triggers as I'm driving around. And once I'm in boost, it's really start happy. It does have a delay. Um, so if you read in the comments of the last video, I put in and I pinned a comment because the question that was sent my way was absolutely needed. And it's something that I kind of avoided in the last part, but I think I need to cover up. If you have the ability to do a TPS and a map sensor merging, where you kind of say here is a 60-40 split or a 100% split or a 50-50 you know, split, use that feature. Those are the best of both worlds. TPS will always out excel. Yeah, I meant that. It'll always outperform um, the initial throttle opening of your car. What happens is the TPS is that signal right as everything's rushing in and it's telling the system how to behave and shoot in extra fuel. With map sensors, even though they're amazingly precise and they're very, very awesome, it has to wait for the TPS to open, the extra air to rush in, the sensor then to tell the computer that more fuel is needed and come back and do it. So no matter what, there's always a very small delay when you're doing a map-based Excel off, of, uh, off idle. Just always happens. But map-based excels cover more situation for a turboed car. Where TPS might not cover that situation perfectly, map-based can come in and fill that gap. So that's why I like a split between the two. One of the cars I spent the most time tuning, I ended up with a 60-40 split, 60 being the TPS, 40 being the map. But to be able to do so, I had to tune both of them independently perfectly first. So I had to go through and tune the TPS, only 100% TPS, and then I had to tune the map, 100% map, and then I had to go ahead and merge the two, and I ran through a 40-60 split, a 50-50, a 60-40, and I found out the 60-40 was the best, so I moved on into a 60-40, a 70-30, and an 80-20, I believe, and uh, ultimately, I, I settled with the 60-40 split. has great all around without suffering up top. So, anywho, hopefully that answers some of those questions. makes sense. allows you to kind of tune around and have fun. Here is kind of where I'm at right now. I ended up cutting back. So my RPM taper, the low value, is now at, uh, it's at 2,000 RPM. And my high value is actually at 4,500 RPM. So I'm completely no acceleration and enrichment values over 4,500 RPM, which is right about the point when it starts getting in from high RPM shifts. But uh, to be quite honest, the VE Tevil covers any of those situations. I've tuned that out so very well over the time that it's just not a problem. Excuse me, just not a problem. Hopefully that makes sense. Helps out uh, anyone that's playing around with their uh, acceleration enrichment and how those kind of function inside of the system. If you have any questions, let me know. Stay tuned.